Does anybody, if they're willing to admit it, do you or have you ever had an anxiety or fear of dentists or doctors? It's a yes for you. You don't fear anything. I probably will in six years. Yes. Uh, but until then. <laughs> but until then. Uh, I hate dentists. I hate doctors. Uh, there's not much in this world that I love. Uh, but what I've found is that everybody that feels that way has a different reason for feeling that way. Now, for me, as a kid, it's always intimidating. You're going into these large buildings of people with funny things. You don't know if they're going to stick you with a needle. It kind of instills this fear of the unknown in you at a very young age. You don't know what's going to happen to you. You don't know if you're going to get uh, a cavity. You don't know if you're going to need a shot. You don't know what they're going to say. But it's never anything good, especially as you get older. That, that's, that's the real trick is that as you age, you just want to hear like everything's fine, nothing broke, nothing needs to be replaced. You know, that's, that's just the, the joys of, of living a full and happy life. But there's also another portion of that, that in, in, at least in my story of my fear that I developed over the years of uh, dentists and doctors, it, it had to do with my, you know, when I was young, there we didn't have the internet. Um, so there's that. There wasn't a way for me to easily look up information. And, you know, basically my internet was my parents that turns out uh, told me with authority the answers to things that they really didn't know the answers to. Things like, you know, what is this going to be like? What is this going to feel like? I didn't have the right answers. And as I got older and I was a teenager, we had moved to North Carolina from, I'm um, originally from New York. I had a dentist um, and I just remember that she, she wasn't a bad dentist. Um, very, very nice woman. But I feel like she, when she looked in my mouth, I felt like she was constantly looking for things that she could fix because she was a businesswoman first. So I would go in there and she'd say, okay, you have a cavity. And uh, oh, these other cavities I want to replace with white and then I want to seal your teeth and I want to do this. Like every time it was like there was stuff to be done. And I, as, as a teen, preteen kind of thing, you know, didn't really know what was necessary or needed or just like cosmetic or maybe she just wanted to do it. And it, and because I didn't know that, I was just like, okay. And I just, I just had this miserable experience of all these things being done every time I went to the dentist. And that kind of just stuck with me. Now, I had a very traumatic experience um, because as I got a little older, I realized I don't like going to the dentist. And now I cannot be physically stopped from not going um, because I'm a force to be reckoned with. I remember my dentist saying, you need to have your wisdom teeth taken out. And I remember thinking, you are full of shit. Uh, no, I do not. Just because they're coming in doesn't mean that they need to, no, 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 Let's just fast forward, because I'm, I'm already tired. It's, it's been a long day. I've been here like seven minutes. I stopped seeing that dentist, and I, you know, I, I didn't want to get the wisdom teeth taken care of because it didn't hurt. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't motivate me. I mean, like, if you're in real pain, you're like, do whatever you have to do. But it didn't hurt. But then slowly I noticed it started to ache. It started to ache, and it turns out that the tooth was impacted. So rather than growing you know, straight up, it was kind of like growing into these teeth. And what does that do? That pushes everything else out of alignment and causes a lot of pain. It was such a slow progression, and this is how it always works out, is that by the time I was at the point where like, this has to happen now, like it freaking hurts, I need a dentist. It's like a Saturday afternoon. Not a great time to find a working dentist or doctor. But I was determined to find one. And I remember my mother was, you know, because she saw I was in so much pain, she was just like, well, I'm going to call the doctor, the dentist, and see if she's available, yada, yada, because she's, you know, shot out of a cannon. But, you know, I wasn't expecting her to check her work voicemail. So I find this dentist that's open on Saturday. Now, that should have been a warning sign, okay? But this guy had Saturday hours, and he was available, to do an emergency uh, wisdom tooth remover, removal, ectomy, I don't know what you call it. Um, it, was, it was this one right here. And uh, as I'm driving to that dentist, um, my regular dentist calls me and says, hey, I'm at the beach, I'm driving back right now, I'm gonna take care of this for you. And I'm like, I don't, please don't leave the beach, I don't like you, I don't want this. Uh, I'm going to a dentist now. Now I should have just said, okay, thank you, and turned around, but I, I already made a commitment. So I go to this guy. This was the most horrifically painful tooth extract 
extraction I've ever had. And you might think, well, you know, as I, I'm sure that this is part of it, I let it go too far and it turned into like, we need to get a saw out and cut the tooth in half and then remove this and this, this and that. And I remember the recovery being very painful. Like it was just sore, sore, sore for days, days. And if you've seen the video that I did on how to swallow pills at this age in my life, I could not swallow pills. So they would, you know, he was happy to write me Dr. Feelgood. I couldn't take any of it. You know what I mean? Like I just didn't swallow pills and I was tired of putting things in applesauce. It's just, you know. so, so I had that experience, a very scary experience. And I had three other wisdom teeth. I, it wasn't equal, but you know, eventually everything kind of healed up and I didn't think about it again. You know, I go to college, I grow up, I realize after about six or seven years, I haven't seen a dentist since that. Yeah, yeah. Katie's mom's a dental hygienist, so she's giving me the face like that, that, that won't end well. So I find a new dentist. You know, it was just sort of like, okay, I should, I should probably go and get a cleaning. I'm an adult now, I should adult. So I go in there and he's very nice and he starts to, I don't know, he has this kind of like wit about him, like this, this, this kind of humor to him that kind of just jives with mine. So when I came in, the receptionist um, said, do you want me to check you out before you go in? Like meaning like take your payment and stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. She's like, we'll turn around. And I'm like, she's like, all right, I checked you out. Now, the, the dentist over, oversaw this, overheard this, and so I'm in the chair. Now, he's never met me. He doesn't know me from Adam. He doesn't know who's walking by. He doesn't know if I'm, you know, a jokester, if I took it seriously, whatever. Uh, he also doesn't know if I'm crazy. But he took a leap of faith with me to some degree. And he said, uh, so I heard uh, her, Martha out there giving you a hard time. And I said, uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. And he said, listen, you want to you play a little prank with me? Now, I'm like in my mid-20s, so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, okay, when you get home, I want you to write a letter. This is serious. This is not making this up. He goes, I want you to write a letter. Uh, attention to, uh, to me um, because the mail all gets open before it gets to him, and it's opened by this person. And I want you to talk about how you were harassed in my office and that you are going to be suing or we can settle out of court for like $20,000 or something like that. Just just put this in a letter. I think it'll be really funny. Now, I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, I'm not thinking anything malicious, so I'm like, I'm going to do that. So, so I do this after the appointment. I send the letter and, you know, it's funny because, you know, I'm not going to like call my dentist and be like, hey, did she get the letter? So, it, so I actually found myself kind of looking forward to going back to the dentist, which wasn't that far away because I had cavities up the... Now, this is a full circle thing right here. They did my x-rays, as they do if you haven't been to the dentist in a while. When that wisdom tooth was removed, the doctor broke one of his tools, and there is a piece of metal under my gums to this day, and every time I go to get my x-rays done or whatever, the, the new hygienist is like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, oh, it's okay. It's just some dentist I saw when I was 19 broke a tool in there, and..." It just lives there now. I named it Herman. So anyway, so I'm going to a dentist now, and he's like, "Look, you don't. It doesn't. You don't need to be a dentist to look at your other wisdom teeth and know that you have to have them taken out." And you know, I'm doing these cavities, but I'm noticing that I, I don't feel like I'm going to a dentist. I feel like I'm going to a bartender. You know, something I'm gonna hang out with, which is really funny at the dentist because they want to talk to you, but you know how freaking. They understand you though. It's the craziest thing. I, like they, they must practice, you know, like, you know, how are you? Ah, yeah, I've been there many times myself. What I started to kind of discover with this whole situation was that I was allowing my anxieties from my childhood to trickle into a traumatic experience that didn't have to happen. And I was gonna let that kind of dictate what the future of my oral health was. And that's not the case anymore. In fact, to this day, I still go to that dentist even though I moved away from that area. It takes me like 25 minutes to get there. Um, but I'll tell you that, you know, my wife, she has a phobia. You know, every time she's like, I go to the dentist, she's like, I need to take some Benadryl so I can sleep tonight, I go to the dentist, go to the dentist. I'll fall asleep in the chair. Like, I've literally gotten to the point now where I'm so like, you know, like, just, I trust him. And that's the thing. I, I've gotten the rapport. We found something. I built a trust with him. He earned the trust with me. And... If he tells me that he has to do something, he'll do it, uh, and uh, and he does what he says he's going to do. 
I let him remove the other three wisdom teeth. It was like nothing. Like it was really nothing. But of course, you know, in comparison to what I had been through, it was it was really really nothing. So anyway, for me, whenever I'm seeing these new new doctors, it's sort of like a relationship. You don't want to take your last bad relationship out on the next one. And uh, you also, you know, you should be skeptical when going to a new doctor uh, or dentist until you build that trust. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to fear it and you have a say. In terms of the doctor end of things, I, you know, as a kid, oh gosh, I needed allergy shots, uh, which, so it was like every time I went to the doctor, there were shots involved. Now, allergy shots aren't terrible, but it's still a needle, right? And it's frequent. And then, you know, in addition to that, you need, you know, your vaccines or whatever else they're giving you that causes autism. And that's a joke, okay? If, if you believe that vaccines cause autism, please list the reasons below. I'm sure nobody will read it. I also had this oral fixation. I don't know if this had anything to do with the, the dentist, but I had, or, or, the, or the pill swallowing, but I have a very sensitive like gag reflex. So one of the scariest, most traumatic things for me, more than a shot or a needle, because actually I kind of got used to that, was the strep test. And I will tell you that I had not had a strep test in about probably 15, 20 years before the last time I needed one, which was actually after my daughter was born, I thought I might have strep, so I went into an, uh, an urgent care to get a strep test. Even as an adult, I'm not scared. You know, like, I'm like, okay, let's do this. It took like three nurses, like they didn't have to like hold me down, but finally one was like stealthy and, and de dexterous enough to be like, you know, and then you're like, Okay, and it's done. What I find is this. It is not going to be the event. It is not going to be the swab in the back of your throat. It is not going to be the shot. It is not going to be any of these things. What I have found is that it's the anticipation. That is what kills you. It is building up these fears and anxieties inside and letting them take over. One of the best examples I can give to this was my LASIK eye surgery. I had LASIK. Okay, that's when they slice your eyeballs in half, burn it with a freaking laser beam, put it back together, leave you blind for a couple hours, and then you wake up like Spider-Man, like, you know, do the thing with the glasses. Yeah, that was, was pretty cool. People ask me all the time, what was that like? And I say to them, it was horrible. It was absolutely miserable. Every second was painful up until they started the procedure. That was a reality. It was nothing. It was 10, 20. 15 minutes maybe, I don't remember exactly. You know, a lot of these places want to give you sedatives, but I don't respond to sedatives, so like I was lucid, you know, it wasn't like I was like, oh, I was out of it, so who knows, I was, I was there, I was talking to him about his Disney trip. That's what I do, I talk to people about their Disney trips, because everybody's gonna go eventually, right? It was fine, but I was torturing myself, like they're gonna slice my eyeballs in half and I might never see again. And I'll tell you, four or five hours after the procedure, I was watching the NBA Finals without glasses and I couldn't believe it and my vision just kind of improved day after day after day. So when I'm talking about building relationships with dentists and doctors, I'm not saying you're going to go to their house for Christmas or take long walks on the beach together. I'm saying build that relationship, that kind of rapport, that friendship, and find common interests because then it will feel less like you're going to a doctor and more like you're going to somebody that knows you. You know what I mean? Um, I find that the most important relationship to have is with your main dentist and your main internal medicine doctor because those are the ones that you're going to probably see the most uh, unless you have a, you know, you know, like for example, my wife has an autoimmune disease so she constantly is going to a rheumatologist but she won't go there if she's uncomfortable. And it's important to know that it's okay to be afraid but what, what's that saying like death is inevitable, suffering is optional? I don't, I don't know. Maybe, that's, maybe it's pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. Uh, who keeps calling me? Fraud alert. That's not good. I always like to think back to the Friends episode. Every, everything can be related back to Friends, which is timeless. Which, it, it's literally like, you might as well insert my, my name there. It's like, hi, my name is Chandler. I make jokes when I'm uncomfortable. I'm like that at the doctor. It's what I do. It, 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 it's a self-soothing behavior. And a lot of these things that I'm talking about and that I'll talk to you about in my personal kind of like struggles are coping skills. Now, my wife is a, a therapist, so um, you know, we, we constantly talk about that, you know, like how we kind of soothe ourselves, coping skills, uh, and, um, you know, having a, a better understanding of what I'm feeling because that, that's a tricky thing. You know, for the longest time, I thought I, I was just a depressed person, but it turns out I was an anxious person and that, and that's a, a different story. Now I've become depressed because I've learned so much 
through my anxiety. Well, now I have some serious back issues. Um, and recently I went, and this is kind of what spawned me to kind of write this is, I went in to get an epidural procedure on a few of my uh, lumbar last week. When you do this, I mean, I don't know how it is with like every orthopedic office, but for this particular one, you meet with the PAs and then the doctors do the procedures. So I was going into this kind of blind in terms of like what to expect, like, you know, what was going, what was it going to be like? And I had to kind of find a common interest very quickly and focus on that because I was, wasn't nervous for the procedure. It was just like, uh, like what, what is this going to be like? You know, what is it going to feel like? I had this doctor give me an epidural, uh, about six months ago and, uh, to, to, to one of my lumbar and I went through the procedure. I made it out just fine. I had a very quick conversation with him trying to get that rapport, you know, and I found out we were about to leave for a Disney trip. I found out he was going to go on a Disney trip. There's a lot of Disney plugs in this. I'm excited about Black Spire Outpost. I'm not going to lie. And so I, you know, I remembered that. I remembered that he said that he was going to take his family. So fast forward a couple months, I'm still in pain because we probably missed it. We're going to go in and do a couple more. Now I'm, I've got, a, I've got a few things in my back pocket. I've like, okay, I've got this Disney thing, this hook. And I also know that I've done this before and it wasn't horrible. Now we're gonna be doing two at one time now, which is a little different, but how much worse could that be? So I get to the office and the first person that's greet, <laughs> this is just kind of funny to me because I'm immediately trying to make jokes because I'm uncomfortable. The nurse comes to get me in the, in the waiting room and says, uh, you know, Michael Goldstein. And I'm like, right here. She's like, will you come on back with me? And I'm like, yes, I will. Now, everybody assumes that you're drugged before these procedures because they prescribe you like benzos, like clonopin and stuff. What they don't realize is that I already have to take those on a daily basis to maintain my crazy. Not even joking. You're making a face like, don't say that. Um, so they assume that you're high on drugs. I'm fine because when you take certain things every day, you know, like if you drank a beer every day, you probably wouldn't even notice it really because your body gets a tolerance to it. Um, but they assume that I'm all loopy, right? So I, I play that up. That's my own joke, my Andy Kaufman kind of humor to myself. She's like, all right, well, you come on back, okay? My name's Chastity, okay? And I said, that's okay. And she was just like, she's like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, come on back. I'm like, everything's fine. Yeah, and we sit down. And she's like, now, did you drive here yourself? And I'm like, no, 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 I, ha I had my mother drive me. She's like, what's your mother's name? And I'm like, her name is Carol, is that okay? And it just it was just this little stupid thing and she laughed and then I laughed and then you know it just kind of helped relax a little bit then they keep you waiting for 45 minutes in a room by yourself where you contemplate your life choices the doctor calls you back you go back there I remember this doctor he was going to Disney so I lay down on the table I say hey how was your Disney trip and that freaked him the f out <laughs> he was just like how did you know I went like, then he was like oh right 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 you are gonna go to and and then as soon as he remembered why I remembered him it was like chatting with a friend. And so he's there, you know, four inches in my spine with multiple needles, going to town, and, and, and I'm talking to him about his vacation. I don't know if this is gonna be helpful to you. All these life hacks are, are just my coping skills. That's really what it breaks down to. I mean, the swallowing pill thing is a hack. That is pretty cool, because I couldn't do it. But a lot of these things that I'm saying up here, it's kind of like a little, I guess, vlog thing of my, you know, because I, I suffer a lot. I choose to suffer. I don't know why. And I constantly tell myself I don't have to. I, I do do that. So getting myself through it is, uh, is important. In general, this is the biggest hack I can give you. And I know that this is kind of easy to say, harder to maintain. It doesn't matter what you are doing, okay? Whether it is going to work, going to the dentist, going to a party, it could be going to dinner. No matter what it is you are doing, whatever the activity, you will do it exponentially better relaxed. The more relaxed you are, the better you are at any single thing. Now I wanna go back to my youth there real quick, right? And I'm talking about those shots. You know, why did they hurt so bad as a kid? Was it because my arm was scrawny? When I think back to me, the reason is, is because I'm tensed up. And that muscle is hard, you know, it's locked up. And so they're putting that needle in there. Now as an adult, I'm like, okay, just take a few deep breaths. I go back to the whole karate kid thing. You know, when life puts you out of balance, go back to the balance of life, just breathe, Daniel Sun. Yeah. Just take those deep breaths, make sure my arms relax. I actually kind of give it a little test before they put the alcohol on there. Like, okay, that's relaxed. I'll tell you something, 
Nine times out of ten, I don't even know that they're doing it. Like, you know, every now and then it might, like, just hit in a weird place, and it's not, it's not bad. But I know that phobia of needles, phobia of doctors, phobia of dentists are a real thing that people struggle with, okay? Now, these are just kind of my personal stories and what I've kind of done to help me through it. What I want to know from you is, what do you do? Or do you not do anything? Have you not been to the doctor in years? Have you finally had to go because of something? You don't have to share personal details, but I think the important thing is that people that watch this video will hopefully want to find something that speaks to them because my situation might not relate to theirs. You know, you mentioned the finger prick thing. Mm -hmm. No matter how horrible that was, I will tell you that it was exponentially harder for me to see my daughter go through that at one year. Mm -hmm. um, now, some kids are oblivious or they don't even know but not my kid she knew and it was I, I, I had to leave the room because I was afraid I was gonna punch the nurse because it's like she is torturing my daughter it's not a quick thing it's not like and we're done it's like milk the blood yeah. milk the blood milk the blood and she is wailing and you know my parental instincts kick in and I'm like protect the girl and then I leave <laughs> so I don't hurt anybody um, my poor wife, man, she's got to be strong because uh, she's dealing with two babies in the house. It, you know something? We actually do this in our entertainment. It, 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 it's literally like any horror movie. So like you watch a horror movie, right? Somebody's in the house. They're looking for somebody. It's dark and they're playing that suspenseful music that's you know, the high-pitched music. And you, you, you only see their field of view like this much. And all of a sudden this door is opening up there. And they like turn the light on and they go, ha! And there's nothing there. You know? And then it's like, oh! That wasn't so bad. It was everything building up to it. Yeah. Now, when they're gonna scare you is right during that time when you're like, oh, okay. And then, it, then it's gonna, then it's gonna. That, that, that's how you do it. That's how you get them. That's how you build up the anticipation. You drop them down, and then you scare them so they <laughs> themselves. Now, I know for a fact that Jamie is not afraid of anything. So you probably don't appreciate any of this. You're just like, what is your problem, little girly man? <laughs> so, thank you for that. I don't know if this is a vlog. If it's if it's a life hack. It's just. When you come to this channel, I want you to know a little bit about me. I want you to know a little bit more about me. This is the stuff I want to share with you and uh, hopefully bond over to some degree. I know that when I'm watching you know, YouTubers, there are many different types, uh, and a lot of them are very loud and over the top, uh, but then there's some that are just a little bit more mellow, and I just, I don't know, I think I reach out to those that I feel like I relate to. So if you can relate to any of this, Great. You can follow me on Instagram at Mike Not Jerry, which I sometimes forget to plug. And as always, it is important that you know that a subscription to the It's Mike Not Jerry YouTube channel comes free with your internet package. So be sure to take advantage of that. Like the video if this has been helpful. Please leave your comments below and ring the bell to be notified. That is the spiel. That is the spiel. I hope this helped you. And uh, I really do hope that if you're coming to this because you know that you were searching because you're afraid, even if what I say doesn't send you some comfort, uh, I'm hoping that you know there might be some people that add to this, uh, you know, in the comments, and and also um, just knowing that you're being proactive, proactively trying to soothe yourself, already puts you ahead of the curve. That's the important thing. You're searching, you're looking for answers, and I think that that's good. I think that, that helps. Okay, all right. How long is that for you guys? It felt like four hours. For me, it felt like three and a half minutes. I remember, I remember did hearing back, uh, going back to the dentist, uh, sending the letter, you know, I went back for my wisdom teeth and I was trying to, you know, kind of calm myself. So, uh, of course I was just like, so did you get the letter I sent? And he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, uh, okay, how did it go? He's like, so she had the letter and she calls me over and I think my face gave it away. Now I have a gift. Okay, I can say anything with a completely straight face and and people, especially my wife, have no idea if I'm joking or not. So I should have been the one to deliver the letter because I would have been like, I need you to take this to the doctor. This is very important. Um, we are going to be uh, going through some litigation because my lawyers are now involved because of the things that you said. And I need you to know that it's not okay. And... Uh, this is my letter of intent, uh, so please bring that up with your superior. Now that would have scared the crap out of her. But no, instead, she has this note and he's going like, <laughs> you know, like, okay, you went, to, you went to dental school, you're good at that. I went to monkey school, so <laughs> I'm good at saying things without laughing. Um, it's a useless skill.